Hi, my name's Pip and I work at Sydney Advanced Physiotherapy in Linfield and we're just going to try and give you a really quick overview of how the spine works. So you've got seven vertebrae in your neck, in your cervical spine, you've got 12 in your mid-back, in your thoracic spine, and you've got five in your lower back, your lumbar spine. You've also got your pelvis at the bottom and right at the base of your lower back you've got a triangle shaped bone in your sacrum and your tailbone's right down the tip there. Now, the way the spine works is that you have these little shock absorbers called discs in between each level. When you wake up, you're going to be two centimetres taller at the beginning of the day than you are at the end of the day. Through the process of moving and sitting and squatting and lifting during the day, you're going to actually lose a little bit of fluid from each one of these discs. When you go to sleep, your muscles are going to relax and then fluid will come back into these discs and refill if you've moved through a full range of motion. It's a little bit like a car tire in that if you don't refill properly, slowly and slowly that little area gets a bit thinner and you can start to get a bulge like this little part down the bottom. Now what you, this, when this happens is basically when there's been a stiff section or just one or two vertebrae where you're not moving as well as you should move. So you might still be able to touch your hands down to the floor, but because these vertebrae aren't moving as well as they should, you can't get the pressure change that you need there. And if you can't get pressure change by moving through a nice range of motion, then what happens is you don't synthesize proteoglycans. Now the way to think about proteoglycans is little cells that suck fluid in. So if you're not making them, there's nothing there to suck fluid back into the disc. So this is where your physio comes in. Your physio comes in and tries to help you move these vertebrae again and get them moving so that you can get pressure change there, so that you can make your proteoglycans so that when you go to sleep, you can suck fluid back in. Now the difficulty is, is that most people aren't aware that they're getting stiff until it's a little bit too late. And what's happened at that point is that you've got some thinning of the disc, so there's less padding between each level. And what that means is that these little side joints here, your facet joints, start to override each other. So they're only supposed to take 16% of your body weight, and they can end up taking up to 70%. And if you have a look here, what you've got is a little gap there for your nerve to come out. Now, if I put him back into a little bit of extension and make those joints override, you can see that there's a little bit less space for that nerve to come out. The, also, the difficulty with this is that these joints here are very vascular, so they're very well supplied by blood vessels, and they're very nervy. So they can get really irritated really quickly, and they can be irritated for quite a long time, and this is where you can get some arthritic development. Okay? So often by the time we see people, they've often been putting up with back pain for a really long time. It's been on and off, it's come back a few times. And what we need to do is make sure that they're getting this moving and so that they're not overloading this joint all the time and slowly developing arthritis. What you've got to try and do is some certain exercises that will help pump fluid back into your disc. Now, when you drive a car and you don't fill your car tires up for a little bit, slowly they'll flatten and you'll get a little bulge in the rim of the tire. If you keep driving around, you'll actually thin that tire. If this happens in the back, it's slightly different. So you'll thin the disc as it dehydrates, so as it's starved of nutrition, you'll get a little bulge in the rim, but because you're taking more pressure on it, it'll actually thicken up. So that makes it much harder for fluid to move in, to be replacing the fluid that you've lost during the day when you go to sleep, and it also makes it harder for the waste products of the day to come out. So this can be what happens when people have really grumbly, angry discs that need cortisone injections or sometimes just oral medication. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea about how the spine works. It's obviously a little bit more complicated than that, but it's a nice starting place for you all to learn to understand. If you'd like to know more, you can come along to one of our free How the Spine Works lectures, or you can give us a call on 9416-4410 and see one of our physios.